Welcome back to Blank Canvas. As you can see, our blank canvas is becoming more covered with pastel, as am I. And um, we hope uh, that you've seen the beginning, initial part of this painting. And we are just going to continue with this. Our models had a very short break. And one of the things that really is important when you have a model is to give them a break, because otherwise they can get very, very stiff. And so you want to make sure that you're thinking about them uh, because we really value the effort that they put in to be a model for us. Okay, so now again, I'm just coming back in, strengthening up my shadows, and uh, looking at the position of the hand. And um, I'm gonna go over all of the areas. I'm grabbing my white and uh, just going over all the very important highlight areas. And that is, again, so looking at the beautiful, very sharp white in the eyes, right in there. And also this beautiful highlight that's going right around the inner curvature there. And on this eye, because there's less light right there, you don't see it quite as much. Then I'm coming in looking over here. Nice bit of white, or not even that it's white, because I kind of blend it in a bit, and I'm just following that. This is again following the socket. So you see that little bit in there. That gorgeous highlight right there. The one on the nose is a beautiful one. And then following this lip line, you can see that it goes remembering our light source and it's going to curve around and accentuate that lip and then going up and fading out as it goes higher. And then just that little bit of the chin has a really pretty highlight right there. It's not quite as much as what you'll see on the nose, but that's pretty good. And then a little bit of highlight above that eyebrow coming up into here. Okay, that's good. I'm liking it. Remembering that there is a bit of uh, shape to the forehead too. You'll see a little bit of curvature in there. So that highlight will come just like remembering the lessons that we learned on drawing even a ball or any shape with any curvature. Now let's get into doing a bit more of the hair. I've just blocked out the hair. And so you can see that in the background, I've already laid in some beautiful blues and greens. And now I'm just looking at the movement of the hair. And I'm looking at taking not individual strands of hair, but actual segments of hair, following through the whole segment, seeing what it's doing, and then laying in. Remember that the direction of the hair is following the scalp. And of course, different hairdos will alter that slightly. But that's the basic idea of what we're forming here. So right now, I'm also looking at where are my deepest darks. And of course, they're going to be in the areas right around the neckline. And we've got some hair coming down onto the upper shoulder. And then so just blocking that in. And the highlights that I see the strongest are over on this side of Chelsea's hair. And again, just getting that blocked in. And I'm gonna just putting in some of that curl right there. And again, I've got a lot of hair that's going to be coming in through this space where the hand is. So we can add that in a bit later. Then I'm also looking at what are some of the gorgeous colors that I'm seeing in the hair. It's certainly not just one color. Hair is gorgeous for all the different colors it picks up. And so when I'm seeing my highlights, I'm really watching for that. And and really squint again at your model so that you're picking up those highlights. And it's what's going to catch the movement of the hair. So you want to really make sure that you're capturing that information. 
And again, going into my deep, deep darks, I'm gonna re-emphasize that once again. And I love this blue. I think, I think it's just a pretty, pretty color. And, uh, and by bringing those darkest darks back again, I'm being able to reestablish re where the edge of the neck is. Very important to know. And of course, those darkest darks are gonna be really close to the face. Um, there, I'm gonna make sure I've got the right blue here. This is a darker blue that I really like. And again, coming in, just darkening that shadow up a bit too. And catching those planes of the face, again, very important because it can make the difference between a face looking far too wide, far too thin, depending on, on what the model looks like. So you want to make sure that you're getting that information correct. And I've also got a hair that's kind of cutting in around to the face right there. So I'm going to put that in right now. Okay. And then sometimes I even... I. I'm not a real smudgy type of pastel artist, but sometimes I will just to get a little bit of the movement going here in her hair. Okay, and now I'm getting another. Sometimes I try a color and I decide, no, I would like something a little bit different than that. And as I said before, with pastels, you need to have a lot of colors because you're trying to find that exact color that you want. And if you have a very limited palette, it's difficult to have that exact color that you may want to have. And of course, you'll notice all the colors that I had in the background are becoming less noticeable as um, I'm, I'm putting the different layers of, of browns and so on in there. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start to move on and get the detail. And as I said before, I often won't draw a real exacting hand in until the very end because often that pose will have changed and it has changed a little bit. Sometimes I can remember enough of the information that it's not a problem. And just watching the overlapping of the fingers here. And always remember the, the various jointings of the finger, very, very important information. You want it to look real and so you need to remember that there's a lot of segmentation in the fingers. That's a long, elegant, beautiful hand. And then there's the various wrinkles that occur even at the wrist as they join in to the hand. We're looking at some beautiful shadows here. The hand is generally a very warm, Area. There's a lot of vasculature in the hands, so we're going to be bringing in quite a bit of warmth as far as color goes. And again, just squinting into there. And this finger's risen a bit, so I'm going to put that in because I still haven't firmed that up too much. And catching those beautiful knuckles. wrist here is quite angulated and then going down once again to check what's that angle and it's really important to capture this because a lot of times when we're drawing we put down what we think we saw but it isn't even close to what we actually saw and then when we're looking at our completed drawing we're thinking why does that look weird and it's because we actually haven't measured haven't put the correct angle even in and of course then it's not going to look right. So now I'm going to come down and this hand I haven't drawn a lot of the information just because I wanted to make, wait and make sure that it was going to be in a position that I could capture 
when we're really working on the hand. Another thing that's very helpful when you are drawing hands is to actually mark out a sizing. So when I'm thinking about, for instance, this hand, where's the bottom of this in relation to my face? And then just marking that out because this has actually shifted a bit and I've already put this in. It's a little bit lower than what it's showing right now, but I already knew that was good but I mean again keep on going back and checking that and as we mark this one I'm seeing my fingers are going down this is my wrist here okay lining that up and checking then again with my hand here and it's because of the way the hand is positioned I'm looking at all these knuckles and you can see that there is there is some weight to the hand so don't minimize it and make it too small because the hand is a very, very important part of a portrait drawing. If, if you're including it in your painting, you want to make sure you do it justice. And again, this is a little bit different from what I started, but that's okay because I've got my drawing in here, so that's great. And now I'm just going to start laying in. And again, I'm going to be using, you'll notice that as I'm using um, colors throughout the painting, I keep them in my tray. The reason that I'm doing that is because when I have established a palette, I don't need to have tons and tons of different colors. And instead, what I will do is, once I've established the colors that I like to use, in this particular one. I will continue to use them and of course I will definitely continue those sa that same color scheme into the figure that I've used into the face. And again you're just wanting to keep your your painting unified and strong. And this hand has a lot of gorgeous gorgeous lights. Okay, and so now again, going back to my basic color that I had laid quite a bit of this in even initially when I was drawing this. Just coming back to that really nice warmth. It's good. And I'm also going to bring that up into Chelsea's hair because I love that color and Chelsea has a bit of orange here. I shouldn't say orange, I should say auburn, to her hair. Now bringing in some of the warmth that I see, and especially in the fingers, you'll really notice some warmth of color in there. And so just capturing that and all this gorgeous shadow. And laying in this color. In each of the portraits that you do, you can choose to do, you can almost stop whenever you want to. And sometimes if I run out of time, I may not complete as much of the hands as I had hoped to, but it's still fine. And there also are opportunities, and I'm certainly getting back to um, whether photography is a good idea. Sometimes it's a wondrous idea if you just need to finish, say, um, the clothing or such, and you just want to take a quick shot of the model at the end of the evening so you can maybe finish off a, a, a portrait that just about done and, and you, you would really be disappointed not to actually have that chance to complete it. But most of the time, I find... Uh, that having 45 minutes is about what I need to complete the, the color portrait area. And an hour is certainly a nice amount of time. Again, looking just for those highlights. And getting those established again. Okay. 
and just doing squinting. Another thing I should have said is make sure you stand back from your painting and take a really good look. Am I liking how things are going? And if I'm not, what can I do about it? Maybe something. And again, just thinking about even this shoulder here that uh, is very important. And uh, working those shadows again. Sometimes it's funny, the most obvious things you may miss just because you don't stand back. So really make, make that an important part of your, of your process of completing a painting. Step back, take a look, reevaluate all the time. These knuckles are so nice and just a really great, interesting shape. So I'm just reinforcing that again. And then just looking for our beautiful highlight at the edge of knuckles. It's pretty well going across. And look at, make sure too also that your hand makes sense. Everything has this beautiful flow. And if, if they don't, if you don't keep that, your hand will not look correct. And just going into this beautiful wrist bone here. And Taking some of that in and some general highlight in here. Okay. And I'm going to bring some more green into the background again, as I said before, as, as we think of it, just to add in some of the colors that we've been using as we've progress through our, our painting here. And again, a very important part is capturing this support that Chelsea is resting on. And also remembering too, you don't have to have everything the exact color. For instance, I've had times when I haven't even actually kept true to the color the model may have been wearing because I think another color maybe will work better. So even though our chair is a gray, I think I'm just gonna put in a nice blue here that I can work the shadows in. And it only has to be an indication too. And Chelsea's got a And again, as I said, you can, you can stay true to the colors that the model is wearing, or you can vary it as, as to whatever you'd like to do. I am going to try just, and if I decide to stay with this, this purple, I'm just gonna block that in, see if I like it. And we don't have a lot, a terrible lot of shadow, but I'm gonna try to find some areas that we can just block in a bit of that shadow there, because it is very important. Just again, to give some movement, some life to that. And it's very shadowed, of course, underneath the arm there. And looking for any highlights. In here. And it can be very simple or it can be very detailed again, again, uh, according to, to what you like to do. Some people love to draw clothing and spend a lot of time on that particular aspect. There we go. Okay, again, standing back. And if I look at my painting and I think, wow, that's, that's looking pretty, pretty
pretty bright. I can definitely just go into that and tone some of those colors down a bit. And it's just laying it right on top. And the pastel is such a gorgeous medium. It, as you continue to build up the layers, you can incorporate all those colors and they shine through and just give a beautiful luminosity. And once again, why it's really important to have paper with a tooth because if you're just using a flat paper, it isn't going to hold the pastel and it'll all just start to shed on you. And then it's very disappointing because all those beautiful colors you're hoping were going to stay on are suddenly gone. Okay. And there, we'll just do that little bit there. And just checking again those last shadows. And in here. And picking out a nice dark. Again, just rebuilding that lip line. Okay, and I'm just going to put edging right here. Okay, and I'm going to call that finished. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Again, our amazing models make all the difference in the world for us to have a successful portrait. And I think it's maybe a little bit less successful when you're talking a lot, but it's so much fun. And if you love people as much as I do, it's just a wonderful, rewarding opportunity to be able to put on paper some of the great feelings that you get from people. Uh, and also just a reminder that if you are interested in uh, joining an art club, we have the Hat Art Club. That as I've said, I've been a member of for 37 years. And there's also the Strathcona Art Club. That is a wonderful venue for learning. Um, it, if you're just a novice, remember that they have wonderful instructors and great opportunities for you to learn and become an artist in your own right.